I hope you're all well. So today we are going to make a, what are we making today? My brain has gone blank. We are making roll up flowers today and we are making them to go on a wooden block. The wooden block as always is from Made by Tree. I use them for all my wooden blocks. Uh, today is just a plain one so there's no wax or stain or anything on it. So I've got my block template and I've made it 5.5 inches by 10 inches um, and it's not, I'm not going to keep it, it's just to give me an idea of the area that I'm working with. So the first thing I want to do is go to images and I've typed in jar and I'm just going to choose one of these sweet little jars, let's go with this one and we can then insert images. First thing I want to do is actually change the colour and just change that to white. Then with my jar, I just want to go and get my contour tool and I just want to contour out those two fireflies so it becomes a solid jar. I'm then going to unlock it and let's try, let's try five inches in width and let's do maybe six inches in height and see how that looks. Maybe six and a half. Perfect. So that's going to be a cut and again I'm just going to change the colour. The colour doesn't really matter, I just want it to be a lighter colour. And again I'm going to go back into images and let's search for spring. Now I don't want this as a cut file, I want it to draw so I want to use my pens. So you can see it's currently all grouped together, I'm going to leave it grouped for the time being and I'm going to change the line type from a cut to a draw and you'll see that everything then becomes a draw and we lose all those colours. You'll also see that they start overlapping so you do have to kind of play with it a little bit. So if we just ungroup it I can then come in and just move things slightly so if we have got overlap and we don't want overlap because we don't want it to be all messy we can then either just move the pieces or we can delete them. So once I've moved it all to where I want it to be and I'm happy with the placement of everything I can then start changing the colours on each of my draw lines so it will prompt my pen to change every time I want to change the colour. So let's click on the spring part and we're going to come up to the line type, we're going to click on the colour box and we can then change the colour. Now the colour doesn't have to be exact, you don't have to use that exact pen and that exact colour, it's just so that your machine knows that you want to change pens. And of course if you can get it close to where you want it to be, it will help you when you come to actually changing your pens. So I don't know what colour I want the spring in, let's just go with an orange and we'll do the other side in the same. So if we change that flower, let's change the outside of it to, let's do a lavender, but change the actual inside to a yellow. And then we can continue to keep changing all those colours. So I'm going to be using lots of different pens today and I just wanted to quickly show you, I've clearly shown you how to change the colours but you can also change the pens. So I'm going to be using gels, I'm going to be using some of the extra fine point pens, um, I'm going to be using lots of different colours. So not only can you change the colours but you can also change the type of pens which will allow you to be able to use more colours as well. Once you're happy with it, you're then going to group it back together and you can bring it over to your jar and just make sure that you're happy with the way it's going to sit. At this point you can get rid of your white square, you don't need it. And I also want to change the jar colour to white. Then I'm going to highlight my jar and my 
drawing and I'm just going to attach them together. So it will draw my image and then it's going to cut out my jar. Now I also want to do some rollable flowers. So I'm going to go back into images. I'm going to go to cartridges. And I'm going to change my search to flowers. It will then come up with felt flowers so we can view all those images. And you can see they've already got some lovely rolled flowers in there. I'm just going to use this one. This is the one I normally use. I think we'll do those ones as well. We'll do a couple of both. So we can then insert images. If you go to your search engine and you type in Cricut rolled flower sizes, you'll come up with all these different blogs and uh, Pinterest pages and uh, kind of information pages in which it will give you rough estimates of the size you need to make your flowers um, and the size that they will end up being. So it's not perfect, uh, but it will give you a rough idea. So I want mine to be different sizes. So I'm going to make that one six inches. And I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to duplicate it again. This time I want it to be bigger, so I'm going to make it eight inches. And that's including the little leaf as well. And again, I'm going to duplicate it. That one, we might as well round it up and just make it a four and then duplicate. And then duplicate it again. And with the duplicate, I'm going to make it, let's make it six and then duplicate that one. Probably won't use all of them, uh, but we can use them if we want to. And if we don't use them today, we can use them in another project. So I've then got my roll flowers that I'm going to cut and I've got my jar. So we can go to Make It. I'm using my maker today, but of course, if you are using your air, it's exactly the same process, except when you come to cut, you may want to move your dial to custom to be able to get these cut settings. I'm going to be using uh, just cardstock today, so I'm just going to choose medium cardstock for all of my cuts. Just got some heavy white cardstock. I'm just going to use my fabric brayer to secure it in place. So I'm going to be using lots of different Cricut pens today. I've got the Wildflower pen set, which is a fine point. I've got Antiquity, which is a fine point. I've got the glitter gels, which I'm so excited to play with. I've got extra fine point in brights. I've got the gel pen set Peacock. And then I've got my pens from my ultimate fine point set as well. So I'm going to be using all these different types of Cricut pens to really make my jar stand out. flowers I use a variety of different uh, kind of papers slash cards so I do like to use the pattern papers uh, so I do use double-sided ones like this one I also use pads like this so this is a hobby craft one so some of them are double-sided and then some of them are single sided and depending on the types of flowers I'm going to create will depend if I use double sided or single sided. I also like to use the Hobbycraft premium card packs. So they're normally 50 packs and you normally get different colours, you get five different colours, they tend to be quite similar, so you'll get blues, you'll get reds, you'll get greens. Those card packs are fantastic for working with rolled flowers.
So I've now got all my cut out flowers. You can see I've got the different shaped petals and they're all different sizes. Now the way that I'm going to work with them is the same no matter what. So it doesn't matter what petals you've got, it doesn't matter what size they are, you are going to work with them exactly the same way. Now you are going to need some quilling tools. Uh, I've just got a set of three here and I just got them from Amazon. There's a extra fine, a fine, and then there is a thicker point. The two finer ones are the ones that I use most, so I use those with my cardstocks. And you just want to slip them into the cardstock to work out which one you're going to be using. I'm going to get my quilling tool and there is a slot right down the centre of it. So I'm going to place the end of my card into that slot and I'm then just going to start rolling the card around my quill. Now I do it quite tightly because I then let it unroll. Some people don't like to do that, some people like to do them quite loose when they're rolling. Um, I like to do it tight, it's just my personal preference. And you're just going to continue to roll your flower around your quilling tool until you get to just where the circle base is and then you can just move away your quilling tool so we no longer need that. I'm then going to pinch the bottom of my flower and I'm going to bring it onto that circle and I'm then just going to let it very slowly and very gently just start to unroll there we go and just let it naturally do what it wants to do but make sure that it is still sat on that circle so it's happy to be about there so again I'm just going to pinch it and keep it in place and then with that circle piece I've got my hot glue gun and I'm just going to add the glue to the base I can then roll my flower a little bit more and I can then place it onto the base. If I then want to play with the petals and I want to just mould them a little bit, bend them a little bit, I absolutely can. If I wanted it to be looser, I could do that. It all depends on how you want your flower to look.
my wooden block here. This is just a plain one by Made by Tree. And you can see that I've got my jar, uh, which has got my drawing on. I'm just going to use some art glitter glue. I'm just going to glue all around the jar, but I'm actually going to leave the top lip area clear. I do not want to glue that. You can then put something heavy on that, like a book, just to really press it down. And you want to leave it for about 20 minutes to dry. I've just got some florist wire here and I'm just going to come in and chop them and I can slip them under the lip of my jar just to work out what sizes I want and where I'm going to put them. At this point I can also start playing with my flowers working out which ones I want to use and where I want them to go. I can also add a little bit of ribbon under there and I can just use some glue underneath the lip to secure it in place. To secure your florist wire you just want to gently push down and you'll eventually have it so that it's sat in there and it's not going anywhere. If you want to add a little bit of hot glue at the top little glue blob just to secure that in place and of course you can hide it by adding one of your flowers in there. I can then get my rolled flower, I can add a little bit of hot glue onto the base. If I want to add a leaf petal in there, I can. Again, I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue. And there we go, we've used all our beautiful pens, we've got some lovely rolled roses, there's so much that you can do with rolled flowers, so have a play and see what you can create.